Hi everyone, welcome to our event. This event is brought to you by Data Talks Club, which is a community of people who love data. We have weekly events and today is one of such events. If you want to find more, find more about the events we have, there is a link in the description. So go there, uh, check it out and you'll see all the events we have in our pipeline. Then not to miss any streams like we have today, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And uh, we have an amazing Slack community so if you want to hang out with other data enthusiasts, uh, check it out. If you're not there, you're missing out. And uh, during today's interview, you can ask any question you want. There is a link, pinned link in the live chat. So click on that link, ask your question, and I will be covering these questions during the interview. And this is the usual introduction. Now I will open the questions we prepared. And... Uh, yeah, I think I'm ready. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, almost ready. Okay. So, let's start. This week we'll talk about being a data generalist and we'll discuss going from bio bioinformatics to freelancer, freelancing. And we have a special guest today, Katya. As a freelancer, Katya is helping companies bridge the gap between business and data by building actionable analytics and coaching the teams. Before, she got, she got a lot of uh, broad experience in startups, entrepreneurships, entrepreneurship and scale-ups. Katya was head of analytics at Gitti, a beauty brand. She tried to find uh, to start her own fintech business with Entrepreneur First, and she worked as a data scientist at Zalanda. And uh, yeah, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you here. Yes, thank you so much for the invitation. It was it was really nice like to to catch up actually. Like I think we know each other for some time. Um so I'm really happy to be here. Yeah, and uh, I tried to invite you multiple times, so finally <laughs> we managed to do this. So before we start yeah. uh, with our main topic of being a data generalist, let's start with your background. Can you tell us about your career journey so far? Yes, and let me start from a bit very beginning to and the jump of what is happening right now. So I started as as Alex mentioned as a, a bioinformatician. So bachelor master degree in bioinformatics works worked in different research institutes across Europe, Manchester University, Charité here in Berlin, and also Center for Genomic Regulation in Barcelona. And after um, having my master degree, I realized that. Research was, I was not motivated that much by the research. And that's where I switched directly to a startup and was a first data hire there. Um, it was, I was hired as a data analyst. I ended up doing a lot of data engineering part, which I loved, but I didn't enjoy it that much maybe. And then I switched to um, Zalando, also was there in Zalando, then in Zalando Payments, and in Zalando Payments was building the um, real-time machine learning systems for, um, for, for fraud prediction and payment scoring. So basically, when you shop on Zalando and you are getting this invoice as a payment method, that's exactly my team who built the algorithm behind so to enable you to, to buy with this, um, with this payment method. So it was super heavy engineer team, um, lots of PhD people, like really, and lots of uh, young people. So really ambitious, really nice. And that's where like all my even engineering background comes from. And then I, after two years there, I was a bit of stuck as regarding learnings. And that's where a very good friend of mine said like, hey, why don't you start something? And that's where I went to entrepreneur first. You can imagine it as a startup accelerator um, founded in London. They have kind of those programs across, across, across the globe. And there basically it's pre-team, pre-idea. So you go there as an individual, you need to identify yourself as a CEO or a CTO. And then it's kind of speed dating, speed co-founding. <laughs> you try to find, um, so I'm more on the CTO side, right? Technical person. So I was trying to find the, a CEO match. And there basically you, wo you work with one person for you match, you work for three days. And then normally after three days, you realize that either it goes good or doesn't because at the end of the day, startup fails because of the mismatch on founders. And after that, so, um, I tr and um, within that program, I tried to found a fintech company, but I went really in a in a very different, weird segment. I went into compliance, so it's like it's the most unsexy thing and the most regulated thing ever. 
So I what realized. Is, what is that compliance? Um, so basically, it's um, KYC, know your customer, know your business. So basically, when people, when um, you need to do checks, uh, legal checks on the person as who you are as a person, like do have you ever had bankruptcy? Are you associated with the money laundry? Do you have a company that maybe was associated with the uh, money, laund money laundry? So all those kind of checks that, for instance, you also need to do when you open a bank account and then you do this post-ident thing. So we went into B to B, um, know your uh, business compliance part, which after that I realized it was interesting. But um, and we want try to copycat an American startup, but it didn't work here for you. And then um, Corona happened, and I was really exhausted after it was almost six months of entrepreneur first. And I was really seriously, I was not ready to fund the company. Like, you know, like everybody around were funding the company and I was like, okay, let me jump on that wave. But like internally and mentally and emotionally, I was not, I was not prepared. Like I would wake up two weeks in a row with a headache. So that is like already a sign that something was not going good. And then I joined, um, um, delivery hero FinTech department. And again, like, was the first data scientist there tried to build also well basically what we did at Salando um the whole machine learning for fraud prediction um i love the people but i didn't feel that was for me so i left and that's where i joined giti direct to consumer brand selling nail polishers um within my uh, my my journey there we went into the um cosmetics um, um, a segment and also right now they launched I think several months ago skincare so it's a beauty brand and there basically I built the whole BI and, and team from scratch and help on the fundraising and then on the 1st of September I left Kitty to to start freelancing yeah that's uh, that's quite a journey what do you do as a freelancer <laughs> How did yes. you even like uh, maybe before you start telling what you do now? It's also interesting to know like how did you decide what you want to do as a freelancer? Okay, let me. Um, so I never like tried to. Fi I think I asked just my question: What is the next step for me? And then what happened? I had a bumble date. Um, I went on this bumble date. Uh, we didn't match personally, um, but then the guy was like, hey, I will invite you to a founder's dinner. Um, I went to a founder's dinner. They were like only founders, like I think 10 people. And then one guy would arrive super late. We would not chat with him. But then what I, do after, I did after, I just added all of those people who were there on LinkedIn. And this one guy, exactly who arrived super late, he wrote me, hey, Katya, we want, like, we want to hire you. And I'm like, no. I, I, I don't want to be hi like hired. I want to do freelancing. What, is, what about it? And then in three days, he sends me a freelancing contract and I'm still at Giti with five days a week. And he sends me a freelancing contract for one day a week. So I'm like, what do I do now? So I go to Giti. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I manage, but I managed to convince them to give me four days a week contract. I start freelancing for the company and that's, and now it's also interesting because on today, this company, um, Kittle, they announced the Series A fundraising of 11 millions. And that was what I was hired for back then, like to help them um, with the fundraising, building the data deck. And um, so that's how it started. And then after a month, I was like, so they are, um, it's a SaaS company. Um, so it's a completely different business model, what I'm used to at Giti, because Giti is like, well, typical e-commerce. And um, but then I was like, after a month of freelance for them, I was like, that looks really good. Like, I really enjoy that. And then I tried to, um, and then I just, some, some friends reached out. I was like, okay, let me help you. Um, and then I decided just to leave Giti and, and, um, and see like how, what kind of clients. I didn't, I didn't even didn't know what kind of clients I should attract. So I was like, okay, let's just leave and figure this out. Oh, that's quite optimistic. So you left and how did you actually figure this out? What kind of services companies need? Was yeah. it just ad hoc meetings in Bumble or? <laughs> no, then I switched to Tinder. 
um, I mean, it's not that, right? It was still a calculated risk because I had this one client at the end of the day um, or even like one um, long-term client and one more kind of um, short-term client. So it was not that like I decided today I leave and then I left. No, it was more like calculated risk that I still have income, a bit, at least something that would allow me to start. And then, um, so I left and then I was sitting uh, uh, September and October on my couch. And then I was like, I don't have clients. I don't have income. I'm like, and then I was tapping into my savings and I was like, and I started panicking. And of course, like what I didn't do, I didn't announce anybody that I was freelancing. So how should anybody know about that? Mm -hmm. So you um, quit, but nobody knew that you are yes, a freelancer. Okay. Exactly. I, 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 I didn't announce it on LinkedIn. I, I didn't tell anybody. I mean, like some people knew. And so I had connections, but it was not enough to, to pay the bills at the end of the day. And then, um, so, and that was a hard realization because I was like, whoa, if I can't do money now, I need to go back to, to work for someone. And then like uh, that, that really hit me. And so what I decided to do is to announce that I'm freelancing right now, but not like, hey, I'm a data freelancer and like I'm here, like uh, pay me, but rather to do a series of a LinkedIn posts. I think that were eight LinkedIn posts. Um, directing I saw one of them and then I thought, okay, like we actually, I wanted to invite you for a long time. So let me, let me do this. <laughs> Sorry for interrupting. Yeah. But exactly. yeah, that helps exactly. to get noticed, right? Exactly, especially with selfies. Like, if you post a selfie, like, it's crazy how many, like, people immediately recognize you, you know? And then, like, if they associate your face with the topic, it's even much easier at the end of the day. So, exactly, I created those eight posts, posts addressing direct-to-consumer brands um, on how to structure their KPIs, what to look at, um, um, when to look at this how to come up like with the easy KPIs and not like with the super complicated ones. So and of course with, the, with selfie on it. So, and then um, I was posting it for two weeks, I think. And then I got two clients out of that. How did you feel about posting selfies? Boy, it was so hard. It was so weird. And like also doing like, like selfies. And then, I mean, I do have Instagram, but I have closed Instagram. And it's a different thing, but like on LinkedIn, it's like professional things. And then I was like, it's so uncomfortable, but that's the thing, you know, like you need to do what you need to do. And then you just do it. And then the funny part, like first and second post, I was like, oh my God, this is so awful. But then I didn't care anymore because like I just got so many likes, um, um, so many shares as well. And people were also like writing me, hey, you're doing a great job, you know? Like, so I was like, okay, then let's do more selfies all right i still don't know if i'll ever post a selfie in linkedin because it's so awkward i know it's really awkward but that, but that's you know like i i i i kind of, i was like ah, whatever just let's see mm -hmm. how it works out and mm -hmm. then exactly i got i got two clients there mm -hmm. Okay, and the clients in the segment that you wanted, right? So these uh, direct-to-consumer brands who needed help structuring their KPIs, right? That's funny enough. So one not, one is kind of a marketplace. Um, it's kind of uh, similar to direct-to-consumer um, brand, but um, marketplace. And another one, it was like a very German company, Mittelstand, um, somewhere not far from Munich. And what they wanted, and that's like so crazy because I get so many different, like my profile is so broad. I can do so much stuff that it's also hard for me to understand like what is my, um, uh, what pain point I'm exactly solving. So that company wanted, they have lots of data, different kind of data, and they they wanted to make a project with me how to monetize this data so that I would go and figure out if we can sell this data to the government or to the job job centers or to whatever, you know, like, so it's not working with the data. It's rather trying to find the revenue streams for the data that they have. So it's kind of completely different. It's not direct to consumer, brand. It's completely different things. And that's like so funny. Um, I have like three kind of different part clients, like 
One clients are like, they want to have this full experience of having head of analytics who would negotiate with the vendors who will sign the con well, not send the contract, but like make sure that the contracts are written properly and like owning everything end to end. So it's like internal data team, basically. Um, other clients, they really want help only with the fundraising. Um, third clients, they want, um, they want me to coach their data team and the business team, because sometimes it happens that they don't chat with each other. Um, and for, for, part, uh, for another fourth um, um, type of a client is that they hire me to automate some stuff that like it's just hard for them to do in Google Sheets. Um, and then I just like have like those small technical projects. So, you know, like four different kind of ways or like packages that I can offer, for. And that's why it's hard to communicate what exactly is the, um, what exactly I'm offering. <laughs> but you still manage to get clients, then I guess it works. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Just like I need, um, I, it's like more for all those LinkedIn posts, like when you do something like that, you really need to understand who are you targeting and then adjust that the messaging for them. Because if it's too broad, people don't feel that they are addressed. And you're still targeting the same uh, audience, the same people, right? Direct to consumer um, brands. And I try um, because that's where the, most of my knowledge comes from, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, from what you said about your knowledge and your background, you did pretty much everything when it comes to data. <laughs> like maybe you exactly. didn't do envelopes, or at least you didn't tell us about that. But like every other, every single data role that is out there you did this so you did uh, data analyst and then as a data analyst you needed to do data engineering then you did data science at zalanda then um, like you worked at gt uh, as a head of bi right or somebody who is setting yeah. up uh, the bi team so i don't know you didn't work maybe as a ml engineer but apart from that or maybe you exactly. did actually do some stuff uh, there too so it's like everything and uh, yeah, also in addition to that, you tried a startup, and yeah, that's uh, that's a lot. So how? Like maybe the question I have is: uh, it seems like you enjoy doing different things, but does it help you in your career knowing so many things, being interested in so many areas? Yes. Yeah, so and that's 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 this whole generalistic part, right? So I never wanted to be specialist in anything. I never wanted to optimize, you know, to figure out how many layers I want to have in my deep learning model. I'm like, oof, oh, not excited about that. You see I'll, immediately on my face, I'm like, oh. but like what I really getting excited about, like connecting the dots between all those um, specialized people and the business as well, right? Because like I, I did data engineering, I did a bit of ML ops as well, but like, I did a bit of marketing analytics. I did BI. Um, I did tracking. I hate tracking. <laughs> this whole Google Analytics, but I also did that, right? So like, and then I can challenge all of the all of those parts and know like the best practices there. Can I do it myself? Some of the stuff, yes. Some of the stuff, no. But that's also like then it also starts to be um, like I'm not a profile for corporate companies, for instance, like. For like Zalando right now, what, what I enjoy doing and what I collected over the time, I'm not the best fit. Neither for delivery here, I'm not the best fit because they are searching for the um, very specialized person, people, and I don't want to do that. So like my profile, this whole generalistic approach works better for, for the startups where I can chat with the business and I can easily explain them the numbers and then I can go to marketing team and figure out their marketing analytics or go to the tech team and speak their language so i'm like and that's so funny because i mean bioinformatics it's also it's a bridge between informaticians and biologists because those two don't know how to communicate with each other and that was i was like through all my career i was always this just person who links someone but doesn't know anything in depth <laughs> Yeah, and uh, do you think it somehow, I don't know, makes your chances uh, of having like a successful career smaller or do you think it's fine? Uh, 
I mean, it, so, right, if you're like a generalist um, sitting in Salando who needs to optimize for deep learning models, you will be internally unhappy by default, right? And if you're internally unhappy in your job, you will not succeed in this job. So in order to succeed, you need to be happy. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, right. And, and, and I, I think it boils down to this, like that, um, the more excited you are, the more um, over delivering you are. And maybe let me brag, let me brag. That was like so crazy right now. Um, so for one of my clients, we're using Fivetran. Fivetran is a data extraction tool. So basically it gets the data, let's say from Shopify and packs it into the data warehouse, raw data. Um, what I figured out is that they had a bug in their code base for how they calculate spans on Google ads. So what I did is that I just pushed the fix to their code base and it got merged. And that's, and that's like, you know, this thing just made me so happy. And the client was like, what? Like, what? You just improved our vendor, vendor code base. I'm like, yes. And that's like, and you know, like, I'm just super happy about this. But like, and that's where like, once you're happy, you're like, you're doing this extra mile and you're enjoying it. And you're enjoying working like till super late. Mm -hmm. But still, it looks like you somewhat have, um, how to say, maybe focus right now. So right now you focus on uh, at least your post focus on like KPIs. And this is, uh, I guess, related to what you said you enjoy doing most, which is connecting the thoughts between like uh, different people and engineers. Um, so the, that's correct, right? So you, right now, this is your focus. Yes, right now, I'm exactly, I'm focusing on, well, connecting the dots between business and data, basically helping mm -hmm. business people understand how to steer their business according to what numbers, um, easy numbers or even more complicated numbers, and how to transfer those um, KPIs or this logic for KPIs in the infrastructure and then what I need there. Do I need the help from the tech team? I can I do it myself? How can I do it and like and do this whole kind of implementation or or outsource this implementation, but like knowing exactly what are the steps there. Yeah, so the focus is right now um, working together with the founders or business people and translate this everything into the data parts. And again, I will like, for instance, data science for me is out of question right now because I'm working again with the, like, they, founders just really need to know what is our, what was our revenue yesterday? What did we pay for the customers yesterday? What were the percentage of returning customers? So, you know, like that are easy stuff, um, but that's what they need to know to understand how to steer the business and how the business is going. So I even like at Giti, we never started with the data science, although I wanted, but just the business was not there. And uh, I see that we have a few questions and some of them are related to the discussion. So a question from Adonis is related to your post. So the question is, looking back, what was the most important thing about the post that made, um, that helped you get the clients? What was the most important thing in LinkedIn posts that yeah. um, really, um, two things, no, three. Um, figuring out whom am I addressing um, so that I would structure the post in a way that pe people who read it will understand immediately I am addressing them. So like knowing, and this, you know, like you don't start with like, what is my post? You start, okay, what is the audience? What's the um, type of voice I'm using it? So am I like professional, flirty and, and, uh, um, and uh, humorous or am I like super professional, right? So like this kind of style. Um, so this is one thing. Then the second thing, I shared those posts with two of my friends and they brutally had, like they had brutal feedback on that. And then I took it, I improved it, done. Um, so f getting feedback on that. And the third one, um, I think it was one of the hardest to put myself out there with those selfies. That's where internally I was like, I, I had to struggle myself. So, and that's, and that's where you also realize once you're like, oh, that might be the point when you're getting out of the comfort zone, which is also might be good. And uh, like, 
we discussed already who you are addressing. So these are direct to consumer brands who are interested in uh, improving or defining their KPIs. So what about the ty type of voice and style? Is it yes. flirty, as you said, or is it professional? And how do you decide? Like, do you test this, or do you just assume that this one will work better, or like uh, maybe walk us through the I don't know one of the yes. posts how you did it? So what I realized, um, I love chatting with people. Like I love, I love, I'm loud. I love laughing. I love stupid jokes. I love clever jokes. Um, and that's where I, what I want, but I, I, I can also be serious, professional and like, and clever and like figure out this stuff and help people. Right. So, and that's what I thought, like, I want to bring my personality over through the, those posts. So like basically professional, um, clever, but still with a bit of, well, my weird humor. <laughs> um, and then the self is also kind of reflects a bit this whole journey. So I, and that's, I, I realized like, I don't want to fake anything. I would just rather, because at the end of the day, clients, they are not paying only for the infrastructure. They are paying for the whole package. The whole package is this energetic person who comes into the room and is always like saying hi to everyone and entertains even the team sometimes. So that's like this, like this energy is what people pay for as well at the end of the day. Do you have any to go stupid jokes that you use for energizing the team? Oh no, it's like I mean, like it's it's it happens to ad hoc here, right? It's, yeah, yeah it's, and it's like it's not it's like even not stupid jokes. It's rather like those internal jokes that you get with the teams, you know, like while you sit with them, um, and then like you just you just start to be friends with those people, right? And that's where like and it's so funny, like with all my clients. Um, with the, all their teams, like I'm in a really good relationship and they are super happy to see me and I'm also super happy to see them. So like you start to have those internal internal jokes at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to make a connection between the posts that target specific audience and then the four different categories for different type of work you do because to me, they don't seem super related. So. The posts are like KPI, KPI related, but then is, as you said, um, like your work kind of fall into four different buckets. So full experience of like as a head of analytics, then fundraising, then coaching, coaching data and business teams, and then automating stuff. So these are kind of different packages, right? So how did the posts help you get things that don't seem very related? Um, the, yeah, because of the reach, because they just, again, figured out, um, hey, this person knows that something, she, like what she writes makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, let's us just chat with her. Mm -hmm. So it's either this, um, so be, people kind of relate, of course, like fundraising, it's another thing, right? But like people relate that, okay, she's technical enough that she can automate some stuff and she understands me immediately. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, and that's what I meant, like, it's hard for me to, and that's what I need to figure out still, like, how to transmit the message as what I'm really doing. And at the end of the day, what do I really want doing? Because like fundraising, it's super tiresome, right? It's like, I had calls at like at 11 p.m. and like had to work till 3 a.m. Because like in the morning, we had to submit everything to investors. So it's not, it's not this day, like dream job. It's, it's super intense. And it's your like the day after you, I mean, I was just lying in my bed, like sleeping. So do I want to do this job for the next like three years or what is exactly what I'm enjoying the most um, where I don't burn myself either. And like, first I need to figure out this actually part. And then I need to figure out how to transmit it through the LinkedIn post so that I attract the mm -hmm. right audience as well. Mm -hmm. But for you as a generalist, what you like, what you enjoy now might not be the same as what you enjoy tomorrow, right? Yeah. How, yeah. how do you live with this? Yes, exactly. So that's that's a good question, right? And the, um, right now I know um, like fundraising is fun and that's where you get lots of understanding like what investors want. Um, so like how they steer the business or want to steer the business. Um, but it's super intense. Um, okay, let's put it differently. At the end of the day, what matters are also people with who you work with, right? 
And that's all my clients are again, like super fun, nice people. Um, and sometimes, of course, there are some parts that I don't enjoy doing, like data warehouse optimizations. I'm like, what? Um, but that still helps. Um, the people help, like this whole atmosphere helps. And that's where um, I still not sure which direction to go as what I love. Plus, is there a market for that as well, right? Because fundraising, it doesn't happen every day. <laughs> And what kind of work exactly do you do for fundraising? So I guess it's somehow still related to KPIs. So you need to show the company in a good light. Okay, these are the KPIs and this is how the KPIs look so far and this is how they will look in the future. So you're still kind of connecting business and data for fundraising. Exactly, exactly. So basically, um, there are just questions of like cohorts, how active are our cohorts. And then I sit together with the founder and like we define what is actually a cohort, what is actually a retention, how do we calculate it? Then like there are 10 different ways how you can calculate it. And then you decide like, okay, which one do I submit and how do I visualize it as well? And if there are like some kind of weird stuff happening, how do I come, how do I, I um, explain it as well so that investors don't find it weird? Um, so it's exactly like, basically we sit together with the business try to figure out how to show, what to show, how to show. And then um, I just go like and collect the data through different databases, different systems, wrangle something in Python, create the, um, the charts um, in Google Sheets. I, lo I started loving Google Sheets. <laughs> um, yeah. And then it's iterate, iteration. And then maybe investors sometimes have other questions. Do you have an examples like of these cohorts and KPIs? Maybe it doesn't have to be coming from a specific client, but just to understand what exactly you do. Yes. So for instance, um, I mean, for SaaS, right? Um, the, um, the business um, to, to, co to co consumers. So like not B2B, but B2C. And um, there you sign up, for instance, um, for, for the SaaS. And uh, let, let's take Facebook. Let's just let's take Facebook. So you sign up and then um, you can do posts, you can like, you can be just active on the platform. So now the question is like, those who signed up in April, how active are there? And that's where you define the activity. Like what is activity? Is it like liking? Is it scrolling? Is it whatever? And how they, those who signed up in April, how active are they compared to those who signed up in September, for instance? And if you see that September cohort is really bad, you're like, okay, what, what happened? Did our product, um, uh, our product started to be really bad? Yes, no. Is it traffic that we are attract, attra attracting, marketing that tracking? Is it bad or good? Yes, no. So like there, then you start to dig deeper, like what is about those people that they are just not uh, active on the platform from specific cohort okay it's about defining uh, uh first like um, kpis then defining cohorts then doing some analysis showing charts and then if something is off uh, going there and understanding what's happening and you yes. do this for fundraising too and then it helps to attract more money right yes i mean like so uh, and that's so funny, like half of the stuff that is normally done from fundraising can be also reused in the business steering, like to look at them on the monthly level. Mm -hmm. um, so, some of the stuff we never implemented, like we never, like it's only for the fundraising. Um, but yes, yeah, so it's kind of, again, how business wants to steer. And then you just figure out how to see what, how the business performs, like what are the users doing, why they are doing it. Okay, so we spoke about fundraising to some extent, but uh, I'm curious also about the other three parts, especially this coaching data and business team. So how is it similar? How is it related? What do you do there? Yeah, so this um, this this project will be, um, I'm not doing it right now, so it's one mm -hmm. of the future projects. There, um, the problem there is that um, the company is pretty it's like six, seven years old. So like they do have the data team, they do have business team. Um, however, it's hard for business 
to be data driven because nobody coached them to be data driven. What is data driven nowadays? So everybody uses this word, but nobody can explain what that is actually at the end of the day, or like how to start actually this. So the business team is like super frustrated. They need to be data driven, but they have no clue what, how, and what. And then the data team is there, and they need to manage all those requests, ad hoc requests. The infrastructure might be already outdated. And then they don't understand just what business needs because they don't have time to understand the business. So those people are not business savvy. And that's the thing, you have engineers or data people who are not business savvy, you have business people who are not data savvy. So like how <laughs> it will not work by default. Um, and that's where I try to help, well, I will try to help them, the business people to be more data driven or data savvy and uh, data people to be more business savvy so that and once all those two parties go with, uh, towards each other a bit like one step then it's already a success at the end of the day mm -hmm. and right it, like you can't measure like it's also hard for me then to measure the success because what i do i just coach them how to communicate with each other <laughs> like how do you how do you measure the this communicate like the success of my work um, it takes time, right? It just takes even like several months, actually, when business will know the impact of this of this coaching. So you kind of act as a translator. So you translate yes. from one language to another, but then yes. I guess the ultimate goal is to let people be able to talk between each other without yes. you, right? And then exactly you do this, and then you leave, and you help somebody else uh, achieve the same. Exactly. And that's like, that's exactly what I was doing also with bioinformatics, like helping those um, uh, informaticians and biologists actually to make sure that like this whole thing works together. Uh, I think we mentioned, so the question I have right now is uh, how does being a generalist help you now? And I think one thing you mentioned is you've done a lot of stuff already. So sometimes you can just go ahead and do this. And even if you don't do this yourself, you kind of have an idea in your mind how you would approach this. Right? So that's one thing I think that can help you in your current role, right? Are there other things that you think also, that are also helpful for you right now? Yes. Um, so I also mentioned that like I know best practices. Is, so like that's so funny, like people know, but and I know best practices, is, but um, I don't know. I know what doesn't work for sure. <laughs> Right, and that's and those mistakes are normally done um, by young teams over and over. Right, so then you see the patterns, and you're like, "Hey, like, I already know now that in three months we will have struggled with it, so let's not do that." Um, so those kind of like um, knowing what doesn't work, um, but because I was like in those different roles, like helps me now to prevent, let's call them disasters in the future. Um, also, I guess, because like I work again, like it's all about the people's communication, you know, like you just adjust to how people communicate and then you try to communicate in their language. And that's why like with this generalist part, again, I was like, um, I chatted with, so many different, I had to chat with data engineers, PMs, COs, CTOs, CPOs, and then you need to find the way how to make them what you want them to make, <laughs> right? And that's like different approaches to different people. Like you need to know how to motivate every segment of it or every person kind, basically. And are there any cons of freelancing? Um, like, are there any cons of being a generalist for freelancing right now? Um, yes, hard to sell myself, like, because mm -hmm. people are just asking, hey, Katya, like, what is the difference between you and the data agency? And this is also a hard explanation for me um, to, to, to define the, the real difference there, actually, because, again, like, you, like, People pay also for this energy. And how do I tell them, hey, like you will pay for, for the nice mood that you will have in the office, you know, like <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Um, so, that. I, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I think it's like, it's um, because I'm not, it's hard for me to sell this generalistic thing um, because uh, there are lots of 
other agencies or freelancers who have very specialized focus. And then people ask me exactly like, what is the difference between you and them then? Well, what is a data agency? Um, so it, like there are several data agencies in Berlin where uh, they help you build, uh, again, maybe for their to consumer brands to help you build data warehouse, um, reporting tool on top of it and like dashboards and also might help a bit with the tracking. So, and that's like, I'm kind of competing with them, but on the other side, um, I'm not, um, because I'm not, again, this typical data engineer. I'm more um, this holistic who will really sit with business first, figure out, and then mm. um, implement. Mm -hmm. From what you described, uh, what data agencies do, it looks like they already have some packages. So if I know that I need a data warehouse, I go to them and I tell them, hey, come over, build me a data warehouse, right? But what if I don't know that I need a data warehouse? Who do I go to? Perhaps oh, you? yeah, but um, yes, they sell. That, that's the thing, right? That's Everything is about how you sell, uh, sell yourself. So data agencies don't sell themselves. It's like, we built your data warehouse. What they mm -hmm. sell, um, dashboards. And that's what the CEO and CPO mm -hmm. and the founders, like mm -hmm. business oriented and founders need, right? They're like, what is in the back? And they're like, I don't care. I just want this fancy dashboard that shows me my sales for the last several days. And that's, of course, mm -hmm. the agencies figured out that like the selling point, like the selling audience is actually um, C-level, CMO, CEO, CPOs. Um, if they, if there is a CTO, that means already that they might be a tech team who kind of can handle that. So yes, those people are the selling points. So like, how do I adjust my messaging to those um, to those people? And that's the thing again, like adjusting the messaging of so that the customers feel addressed at the end of the day. So how do you compete with them by making selfies, posting selfies on LinkedIn? <laughs> because yes. I don't think they do this, right? No, <laughs> exactly. I mean, I mean, but the, so I, um, that's like they, like what I feel more is that I'm more on the business side. I try to be on the more on the business side. And because I was operationally involved at Gitsy, like at steering business with data and also in the fundraising, and that's like experience that those data agencies don't have, like operationally be involved in businesses helping marketing team. Um, they just come, build, they leave normally. Of course, like sometimes they uh, maintain the infrastructure and like maintain the dashboards, but they are not actively involved in the uh, business steering. And that's where I get um, involved immediately. Mm. Okay. Yeah, we have a few more questions. So a question okay. from, from Claire. What are the pros and cons of freelancing according to your experience? Um, so, yeah, so um, we discussed it with Alex a bit before, like, don't be confused by this free <laughs> prefix of freelancing. Mm -hmm. You're free as you choose who you work with and when you work, but it doesn't mean that you will go now serve for a week um, and then can do maybe like three days, uh, like three hours of work. Like this doesn't, this doesn't work because like you need to, work on the project that you have right now, but you also need to grow your own freelancing business. So like basically reaching out to new customers or, or help them somehow so that you get the audience of, um, of people who know you. So you need to like make this audience bigger, right? And that, that are two things that you need to do in parallel, right? So that's why like there is not so much free time in freelancing at the end of the day. Um, the, the pros is that I, for instance, I like work with ambitious people, like people who just started now recently, um, well, not recently, but startups, right? That's like very motivated people, um, fast people, fast thinkers. They want to solve the problem. And um, so I'm really intrigued by those kind of people. Um, the disadvantage of freelancing is that sometimes one month you will be without the money. And how, how do you deal, how do you deal with it? Like, right. So that means that like, if I earn today, like 10 K, that doesn't mean that I need to spend those 10 K today. That means that like those 10 K I need to distribute, like do this whole financial, like planning of my life. And so that I can buy food and this kind of, and this, this hit me exactly like on September, October that like, 
I was just without the clients, so without the proper income. And this is this is a bit scary. Mm. So how do you deal with this stress? By planning things? I mean, so, um, I mean, y- yes, like, Planning, also knowing really exactly how much you spend, not overspend, um, and see that you don't only work on your projects, but really you grow this audience that will become the leads after, right? So it's like basically projects are like short-term optimization, but this growing of the audience is like long-term optimization that you don't know what will come out of this at the end of the day. And that is the the instability or um or the risk that you just take mm. and of course like you should not go freelancing if you don't have any savings like that will mm. that, that, that's hard that's like mentally this will be very hard mm-hmm. or at least if you have like already lined up a client for next half yes. year right exactly then it's that then it's again fine right because like the the hardest part like you will, like you know, like if you don't have clients, you will figure out. Like maybe you can go to the coffee shop and like work there, uh, and and do the um, the coffee. It's like you will figure it out. But like the mental mental health and this mental instability that hits hard. Mm. So what do you do for that? Like how do you deal with this? I mean, so in September, October, right? Like when I was sitting without the clients, I was like, whoa! I, and then you know, like I was immediately thinking. Okay, can I sell something on the those platforms where freelancers do some kind of uh, small stuff for you, or like, do I need to sign up for the freelancers network? Like, what like do I fever, do? Like fever, right? This kind of. Yes, exactly. And then I was like, this, like, but this is not, this is not what I want to do at the end of the day. And then I came up with those posts. Mm-hmm. You know, like, so you you need to be creative, and you will be creative once you are, um, once you realize <laughs> that if you, you don't. Then you'd... Don't they have anything to eat, right? Exactly. You will be, but that's but that's the funny part, right? Because like, um, there should be calculated risks. Like, I didn't go freelancing out all of a sudden. Like, I had a customer already where I was like, okay, with this customer, it goes good for several months. I feel good. They feel good about me, right? So that's where I felt like, okay, I can leave my stable job. Um, and then like I learned about this myself that I can do those like i can stretch myself i can like um i start to learn about my boundaries about my limitations and also about myself more once i'm like getting out of this comfort zone and that's the thing oh one more thing that's like crazy with the freelancing every new client will challenge you Uh, like you feel i feel constantly i'm in the job uh, application process and then the constant job nego- salary negotiation pro- uh, process. It's co- and then like you come in, what I'm used to at Git, right? But I have been working there for two years. Um, I, w- I had lots of freedom, but only because I earned this freedom. And with every new client, I don't have this freedom. I don't have this trust. So I need to build this trust. And building this trust with every client, it's hard. It takes time. Um, and that's where I was like, whoa, constant salary negotiations, constant job application, constant... Uh, building trust this is the, the, this is hard mm. yeah it does sound very hard <laughs> do you work more now than compared to previously yes yes i do i do work more um i mean that's the thing you know like chatting with people do you consider that work or not work right G- growing this audience networking those... gr- yeah Okay. Like, do how how and that's again that, that's the question. Like, you as a person, are you happy doing that? If you're happy doing that, if you're enjoying like um, having three coffee meetings during the day in different parts of the city, and you're running around like crazy, and you again you need to come to those meetings like as if you're fresh, energized, <laughs> and you still need to work to do work for other clients, right? Exactly, exactly. So again, like if it makes you happy, if like if you have the energy for that and you need to create this energy, right? Energy doesn't come like from nowhere for out of the blue, like um then it's yes, you will enjoy that. And it doesn't matter how long you will work at the end of the day. But it's also the question like, is it working hours or not? And that's the thing, mm-hmm. like chatting with people, I don't see that as working hours, but for those hours, currently I'm not paid either. Mm-hmm. So how do you create this energy? How wh- where do you get it from? Uh, serious, 
I don't know. Do you just <laughs> naturally come I, refreshed to every meeting? I think, no, the thing is that I think before, um, before, I think before joining Gita, I was pretty kind of not, well, I, I, I can't say depressive, but I was like calmer and maybe sadder as well, and maybe also more irritated by some stuff. And I think, and that's what I love about Git, and as I also told it to the founder, um, I, I was able to see within the Git that I managed to do lots of things and that I was able to do, to get out of my comfort zone and achieve lots of stuff. So, you know, like, it's like, I always felt like there is a problem. Yes, it's a problem, but I will figure out how to do this. And this, like this belief that you will figure out it somehow turned back to me as like, I don't need to be sad. I don't need to be depressed about this. Like I will figure this out. And that's like, that was a mind change for me. That's like, and that's, that's where I will like now, I'm like, I'm super happy with what I'm doing again. Like, right. And this happiness creates the, the energy at the end of the day. So like in summary, it's the secret is positive self-talk, right? Yes, exactly, right? But that's the thing, like if you start doubting yourself, that's the like that's the most negative energy that you can have and like it will not help further. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a bit so of motivational Sarah, talk. Yeah. Sarah wrote a comment like passion and desire help and the impact once in many trials is so fulfilling. Yeah, so exactly. this is like a good summary. And then um yeah, so you said that in addition to work work, meaning helping clients you need to grow your client base you need to grow your network you need to have leads for the next gigs like after you finish the current uh, job you need to have another one and uh, the, the yeah the question from Wilhelm is how do you reach out for new clients how do you grow your client base um so i don't do cold outreaches um mm -hmm. this is hard this is annoying um, this, uh, the, this makes me sad when somebody doesn't answer my message. <laughs> so I decided not to go with that. I mean, um, before I started posting on LinkedIn, what I did, I was invited to a Slack channel of direct to consumer brands where founders and operators like talk about where to get the best price for the boxes, for instance, for the packaging. What I did there, there were like 250 people. I stalked all of them on LinkedIn. I was blocked by LinkedIn twice for several, for like days because of this, because I was just like really quickly, you know, like I was, what I needed is that like they would see me, um, um, that I, that I have, that I've checked them. So I didn't care about their mm -hmm. profiles even. And then two people, um, uh, reached out to me as well from there. Mm -hmm. So basically this <laughs> stalking helps a bit. It's like uh, a cold outreach, but a little bit different, right? So you yes, kind of, exactly. you stalk them, you make sure that uh, you have this, uh, like in LinkedIn, there, are set, there is a setting that you can set that people see that you visit their profile, right? So this is enabled for you. So you yeah. visit their profile and uh, they see it and then they check your profile, right? And then yeah. they decide to talk to you themselves. Yes, I mean, like, again, conversion rate from 250 people to two people is super small, I agree. Uh, but it's fine. It worked out, you know, like, and it took me maybe one hour for two possible leads. Fine. Mm -hmm. um, so this, then also, you know, like, if somebody posts on LinkedIn, hey, I have this reporting, like, what is the best reporting tool? Then I jump immediately on that question, mm -hmm. right? Um, I'm also in several Slack, like, private Slack channels with the, where people are asking questions. And then I, I also jump on it. I'm like, okay, let, let, let me help you. Like one client right now, I, I like potential client. Um, well, even not a potential client, we just chatted with her. She uh, needed like her freelancer for Google Analytics, not answering her. And like she has a project she wants to um, do some, like G, moved from GA3 to GA4 and then adjust some stuff. And then I was like, hey, let's have a chat. I want to understand your problem. I can like, I might not be able to do that, but I know people who might be able to do that. And then we just chatted for, you know, like for 20 minutes and she was super thankful that I just reached out and helped her. 
Mm. And it might be exactly. It might not be that like that she converts to a lead, like to to a uh, to a um, customer, but like she has seen my face, she has seen what I can do, she knows it. She can also maybe uh, suggest me to someone. Mm. Okay, so networking, helping, uh, stalking people on LinkedIn. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's your secret. Okay. Yes, and selfies, selfies. Don't forget selfies. selfies. Yeah, that's the most important thing. <laughs> yeah. Do you work remotely, or it's so always like within Berlin in office? Yes. So I love, I love being in the office. That's where I also like, and that's where this whole energy is created, right? Like this whole communication with the team. Um, I am not this typical digital nomad who will go to Bali, surf, and then work. I love to. I'm doing always 100%. I'm trying to do always 100%. So either 100% work or 100% vacation. So I'm not this in this like, um, uh, how do you call it? Workation part. No. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm i still considering if I should stay in Germany, in Berlin, or should move somewhere else. I still don't. I, I don't know. But like, I feel now that there is a freedom of me. And that's where the free comes in. Um, if I'm able to structure my clients in a way that, uh, I can work remote for them and I don't need to be in the office. Then I can move to when, wherever I want. Um, and this is also amazing. And that's where this whole free, like all of a sudden advantage of this free, free in freelancing comes. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. And then I noticed that there is one question in the list of questions that we prepared. I don't know if we have enough time, like we only have three minutes, but maybe we can try to cover it quickly. So what would be your advice for people who feel stuck at what they're doing? Don't sit, act, act immediately, you know, like, and again, don't quit today. Like, don't, don't, don't do that. But rather, um, so if you're, let's say you're a, a machine learning engineer and you're like, I'm a bit stuck at work. What should I do? Reach out to the consultancies and uh, um, talk to them. Maybe you could join them as a freelancer one day a week. Like just start chatting with people, trying to figure out what people, what others can, or or what I did as well. Um, I reached out to a data consultant. So who is of a, a almost similar background than I, but much more experienced. And he is targeting other um, customer group. Um, and I just like, hey, I want to do this. Um, what would be your advice? You know, like just start chatting with people trying to figure out but like take the calculated risks as well so like but don't sit on the call on the couch just really start doing something so even small things are also fine mm-hmm. so this is like if you feel stuck and you want to be a freelancer right so this is what you do but in general I mean, talk to people right yeah but that's the thing you know like even if it's like maybe you don't want to do the freelancing right but like just start chatting with people who you think are excite, exciting people who you think can help you with an advice or something. And like, really, people love to help. People will uh, write back. Mm. Okay. Is there any book or other resource that you can recommend to the listeners? Yes. So I think two. Um, one is more like kind of, well, general from generalist. <laughs> the power of moments. Um, it is basically, they talk a lot about lots of things. It's like how to do storytelling um, in, with very nice um, examples um, from all over the world, um, how to create the moments for the other people that they will remember, like, and how also like create this energy, like how, what does it mean actually to create this energy? Um, love this book, I just read it recently. And another um, so that's the book and another is more a general book. And then another one is more like kind of about marketing analytics, what I was doing the last two years. And um, there's this guy in Google, he's like senior director, strategic analytics or something. Avinash, Avinash Kaushik blog and newsletters. So that's like just a bomb of knowledge. Mm. <laughs> Okay. Um, so who is interested in this like marketing analytics part that's for that, that that's the newsletter okay and I also usually ask how what's the best way to reach out to you I think it's LinkedIn right so we'll yeah. include um, uh, the link to your profile 
And I think that's all we have time for today. That was amazing talking to you. Um, like you're very energetic now. I feel the energy now. <laughs> Go and work, <laughs> do something great. So yeah, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for sharing, sharing all that. Thanks for telling your story. Um, yeah, it was amazing. Thanks everyone else for joining us today. And uh, yeah, have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me and have a nice day as well.